Good. All right, this says this webinar going live. It says it's now live, so we should be all good to go here. I'm gonna have a Q&A thing open for people to ask questions. And well, it looks like we already have a couple, couple folks in. Hello, everyone that has been joining us for tonight's event. Happy to have you all here. We're just gonna be getting started in just a couple minutes. It's gonna give a couple more moments for everyone to get comfortable and also to just get on into the event. If you all happen to have any questions beforehand, feel free to throw it into the Q&A box or to the chat and I would be happy to answer any of those questions. So let's get a couple minutes here. We should be right on good to go. Okay. And I'm probably going to go back and Greg just put back my accordion real quick so I don't trip over it, knowing my luck. I don't want to hurt myself. That's good. <laughs> All right, and I'm just trying to get everything good and organized here. And we're going to be talking about every kind of which instrument that you have in your in your arsenal, <laughs> right, Greg? Kazoo's, washboards. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah, just whatever falls out of the trunk, I guess. You know. <laughs> Awesome. That'll be great. So let's see. If you're feeling okay, Greg, we can go ahead and, and get started here. And I can give the intro. Yeah, sure. Uh, whatever. Whatever. All right. Perfect. So I'll just go ahead and close this real quick. See if I can Q and A. All right. So I'll just go ahead and get started, everybody. So good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this Friday for Meet the Artist, part of our Quarantunes Digital Performance Series, highlighting and celebrating the diverse traditions of South Carolina. My name is Ian Halligan, Folk Life Program Coordinator for the McKissick Museum at the University of South Carolina. During Meet the <coughs> Artist, we will be sitting down with performers in our Quarantune series to learn more about the art forms represented, as well as the performers themselves. Audience members are welcome and always encouraged to submit questions by typing into the chat box at any time throughout this talk. I will relate these questions to the artists directly. And before we begin, I would like to thank the South Carolina Arts Commission for their support of this evening's event. Meet the Artists and Quarantunes would not have been possible without the Folk Life Partnership Grant, which the Arts Commission provides the Kitsick Museum to amplify their traditional arts programs. With that said, I am joined tonight by Greg Buffalo Barfield, a multi-instrumentalist, singer-songwriter, and storyteller from Greenville, South Carolina. Performing professionally since 1994, he has written songs in several genres, including traditional country, folk, bluegrass, gospel, and children's music. First starting at the Alabama Theater in Myrtle Beach, Greg has traveled throughout the Southern states, the Adirondacks, upstate New York, and New England, presenting concerts, workshops, outreach programs, and many, many more. With a focus on audience participation, he has presented interactive concerts featuring old-time Appalachian instruments like the washboard, spoons, kazoo, jug, and the wash tub bass while teaching the history and background of these instruments at performances and demonstrations. So again, please feel free to ask questions at any time. And Greg, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Glad to be here with you. So I just want to go ahead and get started here and just kind of learn a little bit about your background here and if you can just kind of tell us about your earliest exposures to 
old time music? You know, how were you first introduced? How did you first come across it? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was listening to your uh, your wonderful uh, spill there about me, a little press release there. You know, I was thinking, boy, that's a good pack of lies somebody had to come up with. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's funny though how it does happen now um i mean i didn't set out to uh to do half of the things that we really uh do nowadays and i say we because uh my wife travels with me uh full time and plays she and i travel and tour and play full time together so if i'm saying we a lot i'm talking about michelle my wife but um you know it's funny because <clears throat> I sort of backed into this whole um, traditional folk life, uh, folk way uh, learning experience. I didn't realize I was doing that. You know, I was just interested in something. And in particular, like uh, things like the washboard, uh, I just enjoyed, uh, Michelle and I both enjoyed Cajun and Zydeco music. And we wanted to find out about it. So we went down to Louisiana. I mean, we just made a trip because we're, we're crazy like that. We go, hey, you know, I'd like to learn about that. Let's go down there and just uh, meet those people and see what they're doing. And I guess I thought I could just walk into a music store and uh, find, you know, washboards and accordions and people. And uh, to my amazement, what really happened was is uh, the first guy that I had Googled, you know, I just did a Google search and said, uh, you know, accordion builders. And uh, around Lafayette, Louisiana, there were um, about maybe five or six different guys, you know, that within a, say, 50 mile, you know, radius. And the first one that I went to uh, was a guy named Greg Mouton, Mouton's music. And uh, I couldn't have met, you know, I couldn't have met a nicer guy to be the first guy that I ran into because Greg and his family knew everybody. And he was just so super nice to introduce us and the one thing led to another and that's really how we got started with uh washboards i had a uh, i picked up this old um this is a, a zydeco washboard or rub board they call it a rub board down in louisiana and um this one has our i stuck the merle fest sticker on there actually michelle did it one of the uh, years we played about eight years at merle fest and uh we stuck that on there. Somebody gave us a little sticker, but this is a uh, one that was handmade down there by a fellow named Larry Miller. And uh, we met Larry the next day, Greg introduced us to him, but these were the first rub boards that we both started playing and Michelle played this one all the time. And uh, you can see it's got a lot of miles on the, on the surface there. But I, I remember taking this to the Hey Good Meal. I mean, uh, you'll get a kick out of this. I just, I hadn't even thought about this story. But I mean, this is probably back about 2004. And um, I wanted to go to the Hey Good Meal. And I know, Ian, you know what the Hey Good Meal is, but a lot of people don't. Uh, some of the people that when we're traveling up north and hopefully some of, the, some of our northern buddies are on tonight, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, I'm always talking about the Hay Good Mill and Pickens County and that sort of thing. But the Hay Good Mill is a folk life center that happens to be, you know, 20 minutes up the road from me. <clears throat> and um, just a good place to go hang out, meet other musicians, bring whatever it is that you like to play, sit around and jam. <laughs> so I had the great idea one day that I would just put this, uh, you know, in the car and go up there. So I decided that day though, I rode my motorcycle and I had a, uh, I had a banjo that I strapped on the back and I literally took this thing and just put it on my back like this, you know, <laughs> just rode down the way, got to the mill, pulled this off. And um, I went over to two friends of mine, uh, Dean Watson, H. Dean Watson and Steve McGaha. And um, they were at the mill and I walked up with this thing and said, Hey, you know, I want to, jam with y'all and they were like everybody's like what the heck you know and um but either way it turned out to be a lot of fun and um you know most people at the mill had really not seen one of these up close you know and that up there you know there's all the old time uh traditional people and they were all saying well you got to get a you got to get a wooden washboard you know so the first wooden one that i got was this one and this is a this is a bigger one. Um, I've got a smaller one over here, you know. 
and uh, we'll oh, wow. I'll tell you a little bit about those. But this one is uh, an old uh, national washboard. And if you look on all these, all of these nationals have a, uh, a number. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the number on whatever the washboard is, then you can go, well, uh, this one, 725, is one that was a, a zinc king, and uh, it's made out of zinc on the front. And, uh, you know, like all the old time players, you know, you would see them with different ditties, you know, all over this kind of uh, attached, however. Some people go really all out, and it's almost more of a kind of jug band, hokum -y kind of thing to put, you know, symbols and pots. And uh, I had picked up this uh, the other day. The, my bag of peculiars over there. You said what all we're going to have. This was kind of interesting. It was a little bitty bale, and it's still got the – this is a, a goat bale. Oh, wow. It's got a great ring, doesn't it? Listen to that. And it's still got the piece inside. Now, what what I have to do is to play it on the washboard, you'll take this out. Mm -hmm. And then, like over here where this is, you can, you know, put a little hole and attach it, you know. And so you have to, it's funny, man, to play a washboard, you have to come up with all these little, be a little mechanical, you know, and figure out a way, how am I going to connect that? And where would I put it, you know, where do I want to hit it? Uh, where would it be? Those kinds of things, you know, some people, you want to put them up high, you know, put them right there and hit it at the thing. But it's, uh, it's really a lot of fun. And, you know, I backed into this as I started playing more on these wooden ones. Uh, people would ask me, uh, you know, that was the first time someone come up and said, hey, you know, would you come do a workshop, you know? And, uh, and it, it was like, you know, just over my head. I mean, I was like, what do you mean? You know, what are, what are you talking about? And uh, they were like, well, you know, come tell us about that instrument and, you know, uh, the history or whatever. And really, I, I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. But, you know, I realized that actually in my research, you know, I just Googled it up and went to Lafayette, you know. But I met people, man. I met, I met some of the most uh, interesting and influential Cajun musicians. Larry Miller that made that, um, you know, this one, he makes accordions and he makes these and he makes all kinds of little ditties. And um, Larry said, look, you know, uh, come back tonight. We're going to have a crawfish bowl and um, we're going to have some of the best musicians in the area going to be over. You know, people say that to you lots of places and you think, okay, yeah. And, uh, but we were like, we'd never been to Louisiana. We'd never had a crawfish bowl. And we thought, man, that would be a lot of fun, you know? So it was me and Michelle and we had her mother, my mother and my father. And Larry's like, all of you come back and eat. We're going to boil a big crawfish bowl, you know? And uh, then we're going to play music, bring something to play, you know? So we did. And I'm going to tell you that was the best experience because we just sat around in his backyard pulled these crawfish and everybody ate it, you know, on a big board outside and poured them out, you know, like they do on TV. I'd seen that all my life, but never experienced it. And then we all, people sitting around playing music and they brought, you know, because Larry is a, a, an accordion builder and, you know, was quite well known for uh, making his, he calls them bone tea cage and accordion. And there were a lot of, I mean, he made a lot of Zydeco guys, uh, accordions he made cajun guys uh people like jesse leger that we were talking about earlier that you and i know and there was a guy there named paul daigle and uh you know the savoys were there you know and uh savoy you know i it was my southern accent i kill all those names you know you can't tell me to say a french name i'm terrible but uh i'm still learning there but either way uh i was just i didn't know you know i was just there and playing and jamming and doing whatever you know and uh that's where we met the, the first, there was a super nice lady who shared, she, she could really play a washboard knife. And she shared lots of little tips with us that night about playing washboard, me and Michelle both. And um, I don't know, man, we just came away with this whole different thing that I've shared that story many times and lots of different pieces of it. I didn't realize it was happening, you know, at the moment, but, everything that I have done has been something that I just backed into because I was interested in it. And, um, 
you know, uh, one thing led to another, but it ended up giving me uh, kind of a unique perspective and, you know, this, uh, this little wealth of uh, knowledge about some of this stuff. And I, I love that now, you know, I've realized that it was happening. You know, it took me a long time to realize that was happening. But 10 years later, I went, you know, I try to hunt out people now, if I can find someone who is doing something like that, because a lot of these people like Larry Miller, I mean, he was retired when I met him in 2004 or something. And, um, you know, um, you're lucky to meet these people because a lot of them are not around anymore. And that night, I mean, those people I was mentioning, uh, they were all people who were Grammy award winning or Grammy nominated musicians that we just set in a circle around his, you know, little campfire and played with. And they were all so down to earth and just, you know, wanted to share once they found you were, genuine about wanting to learn about that tradition and their culture they were happy to share with you man they were you know i remember the one guy there paul daigle and he's played on all kind of people's albums and records and uh you know he was like come you know how long are y'all gonna be down here you know because we were in our camper and we were staying and uh, he's like come come by the house you know and i'll because i had just gotten an accordion he's like come on i'll I'll teach you some stuff, you know, and I thought, man, how incredible is all that, you know, but, uh, but we only had a couple of more days to stay and we had to down the road again. And that's kind of been the, the way everything that Michelle and I've done. It's like, uh, we're always traveling and, you know, doing what we're doing and we're in an area for a little while. And we just try to make it a point to look a little harder than we used to, to find someone who is doing something a little different and unique, you know, that it really falls into that traditional arts category. It's been great. That's wonderful. And, you know, on this topic of Louisiana in Cajun Zydeco music, we actually had a question from Alan Jenkins. I apologize if I mispronounce your name, but they would like to know the specific differences between Cajun and Zydeco music. Yeah. Well, you know, first off, I have to say I was joking with Ian earlier, you know, and on everything that we're doing tonight, I am certainly no authority on any of it. Uh, I'm just another guy that's playing some music and, you know, learned a few things, shared a few things along the way. But that's one of the things that I learned pretty quick when I went to Louisiana, that people, you know, thought about it differently. You know, I just thought Cajun and Zydeco, it's the same thing. Well, that's not the case, you know. It's kind of like up here in our neck of the woods in the Carolinas where people are uh, old time traditional music players and bluegrass players. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, they think, especially like when we travel off uh, up north or, you know, somewhere of the Midwest or something, <clears throat> they think uh, if I have any kind of a, a banjo or a fiddle or you know I don't play fiddle at all but you know if you have one in the band then uh, it's a bluegrass band well that's not necessarily true and it's the same way with the the Cajun and Zydeco stuff and my my short answer to that is and there's a lot of a lot of more depth to it than this but um you know uh, Cajun music is a little bit more on the traditional side like something like up in our neck of the woods here in the Carolinas that are old time musicians and old time music, which, you know, uh, it's kind of like the difference in old time and bluegrass. And, you know, there's a lot of different people who say that there's a lot of ways to say that's different, but, you know, generally you look at people like Bill Monroe and, uh, flats and scrugs that come along in the late forties, you know, early fifties and that, style they were doing was different especially you know Scruggs roll with his fingers was quite different from claw hammer and you know all of the people who came before that and I, I always use Grandpa Jones because most people don't realize unless they're into old time music who some of the really traditional old time players were but people like you know Grandpa Jones and String Bing were seen on the Grand Old Opry so people knew because of that, oh, well, there was this different style of playing and they're frailing at the, at the thing, you know? 
uh, but there's, it's like that. And Zydeco music uh, has a mixture of Creole uh, music and, uh, you know, just an African American influence that was when they heard Cajun music, you know, uh, traditional Cajun folks playing traditional Cajun music, they were like, man, I, you know, I like that uh, accordion, you know, but uh, I'm going to add a little, you know, more bluesy syncopated sound to it. And so Zydeco music to me nowadays is, you know, is a real danceable syncopated kind of a mixture of uh, Cajun and blues. Uh, but, you know, it's not even that simple. You can't say it's just Cajun and blues, you know, but those are the basic two differences, you know, uh, and then, you know, even what there's, you know, the songs may be singing about or something like that. Uh, but there's little differences in there like that. And, and, and here's another thing I find interesting. If you ever go to Louisiana and you go to a, uh, like a Zydeco club, there'll be a, a lot of dancing and, uh, you know, everybody's dancing every song and the, the steps and the, the two step looks different to a Zydeco beat than it does to a straight up Cajun beat, you know, and the same way with a waltz, uh, same thing. It's just a different kind of way of doing it. And, um, but they, they both have a lot of the same influences. Uh, you'll see Cajun bands that have a, um, a washboard, you know, I mean, these are, these are thought of a lot. This is how is a, is a Zydeco instrument. I was telling Ian earlier and I'll share this with you guys, but, um, one of the nice, nicest experience I had about learning some of this was from a guy named Don Landry and, uh, T Don Landry. They, they spell that T E E. So it's T Don like little Don and, uh, Don Landry has a company that makes these now, and they're called the Key of Z, K-E-Y, like the key of A, key of B. So it's Key of Z for Zydeco, rub board. And I would highly recommend looking at his stuff nowadays. Uh, I don't know that Larry or his, Larry's grandson is building some accordions. Ian, have you seen any of Larry's grandson's uh, accordions or anything? I believe so. I know, I want to say that it might've been on his, his either Facebook or, or website that they're advertising. Yeah. Well, I know his son, his grandson was there at that jam that night and uh, I mean, they were young, you know, and uh, he was uh, playing and uh, him and Wilson Savoy and uh, man, they were just, they were fun. They played all kinds of stuff and had a good time. And Wilson has gone on to play with all these different, uh, bands from baton rouge area and they they're out playing festivals like merle fest and stuff and uh they they have some really good stuff but um that that this was one of the uh the, the ones that larry made and i'm not sure if his grandson's making them but if if you, you go to bone t cajun accordion i would highly recommend anything they're making if they're making it because this is nearly you know 20 almost 20 years old you know but um Cajun bands will use that, but another thing the Cajun band plays, let me see if I got one in my, over here in my little trunk, I got my little suitcase laying over there. My buddy, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to my old drumming buddy, Russell Farrow. He's always says, this is my, uh, he said, we got into your bag of peculiars over there. <laughs> I said, that's a great name, the bag of peculiars. So let me see. <laughs> This was another thing that I bought that first trip when we went down to Larry Miller's. And um, this is a, a, a Cajun triangle, you know? And I just like, you know, when I first seen that, like, I had to, you know, I'm like laughing and joking because I'm thinking of like, uh, you know, all the Saturday Night Live, you know, things of like, oh, I'm gonna play the triangle, you know? But this is, um, these are made, this whole thing, a guy forges them down there and he makes them from a, uh, a tine that's on a, uh, like a plow, you know, something that cuts the earth and uh, a tine that goes on the back of a, a tractor, you know, and you comes with a little leather piece and a lot of traditional Cajun groups play one of these. Now I have never seen, I don't know that there, you know, there could be Zydeco guys that are playing it too. But this is another one of those things. It's like the rub board. You know, you go, well, what makes that sound Zydeco or Cajun? And it's that. It's if you put that rub board in there with the accordion and the fiddle, you get something that's 
different. It's something that's special. And, you know, and you'll see like the rub board player playing and, you know, especially an amplified Zydeco band is, you know, I mean, that's like, man, it's cooking, you know, it's cranked up. And so they're mic'd up good. And, uh, you know, you think, well, is he getting out over that? Or, you know, what's, what's that guy standing over there doing that? But if you take him out of that mix, that music will change immediately. I mean, you will notice it. It's just like, what the heck just happened, you know? And uh, so it's really quite quite the art form. And those guys down there, man, they know how to play them. I mean, you know, they just have such incredible uh, rhythms and the syncopation that comes out of it. But these intrigued me too, because we went, like, we went to a Cajun uh, place it was called Richard's Club in Opelousas. And um, Mr. Uh, Larry Miller sent us up there that night to hear a band. And he called Mr. Richard to find out who was playing and told him we were coming. And man, we had the best time. It was in this old, I mean, that thing had been there. Good Lord, had to be, I mean, that had to be from the 20s and 30s, the building. I mean, it was, it had a blue tarp on the top and the roof was about to fall in, old wooden floors. And they just opened up the windows on the side with these uh, big attic fans that would suck out, uh, you know, the air through the building. And people danced, and, man, it was the best thing. And then the next night, we went to a little Cajun, a really small restaurant-y kind of thing that served food and played Cajun music. And the group that was there was playing. There was a lady who would play uh, those triangles, a little bit of washboard. I think she played some fiddle. But uh, the way they do it is it hold, you hold it with this piece of leather. And then that's there so you can kind of mute. Hopefully you can hear that. Uh, okay, without that. It's loud enough, but that. And, you know, what they're doing is it's a little beat that's right in the back of that corner. And normally they would kind of keep it down on their leg. They keep it kind of close. So you can mute it with that as well as with your hands. You get a... That's so interesting. It's, it's held the same way like you would like an accordion. It's, it's absolutely. And this yeah. is one of those things that if you take a band that has accordion, fiddle player, and usually just a guitar. And, you know, the guitar player in Louisiana, I always kind of feel sorry for them because they're like, you know, they're like me. I, they play all the rhythm. That's all they do. They're just playing the rhythm. And, you know, most of those, uh, like you take a two-step or something, and it's usually like two chords, you know? I mean, uh, a lot of two-chord songs with one little passing, you know, five chord. Uh, you know, or it's just so funny how that works. And um, they'll put that in there. It's got a heck of a ring, you know? And I have a, a lot of a lot of fun showing folks this, and especially uh, younger kids, you know, because you think of like, uh, I wish I could think of what was the uh, character that was on Saturday Night from, from ever, and I go, uh, the guy would come on and play his little, you know, thing, and he had the hair all stuck up straight. Maybe if somebody out there can remember uh, what that comedian's name is. He's uh, extremely- Anyone in the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, uh, this is another really great traditional, Cajun instrument and I love the way you know the the work on it is just incredible you know um and they they really uh they have a really nice sound and again this is one of those things that's a traditional art form for them down there that um I would have never thought twice about had I not seen the people playing it live that night I mean when you put it with the, the accordion the fiddle and the guitar this is exactly what it needed to just have that little, you know, without a drum kit, this was enough to, you know, to bring it to life. And um, that's, that's what I enjoy about it. And so for like me and Michelle, you know, what we tried to do was find things. I remember, you know, uh, when we first made that trip and like the next times we would go and we record a lot of our tracks when we're traveling, you know, so if we don't have a, um, you know, a bass player that can come and play or a guitar player to do whatever, we'll record some tracks. And then that way, if I'm just playing one instrument at a time, we have a kind of a full sound. And I would lay down tracks 
you know, with no drumming, I would do a, a washboard track and put, you know, a little bit of that triangle in behind it, you know. And um, so, you know, you take that thing doing its little ka-ding, 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 ka-ding. And then you take one of these. And uh, one of the nicest tips I'll share with you guys tonight is we like to play with these. This is nothing but a, uh, a whisk, just a regular whisk. And I had put a piece of a, this is a little piece of a heat shrink like you put on a wire. And I, I just do that so you can hold it. Plus it keeps these from moving a lot. So here's your, here's your tip for your wannabe washboard player out there tonight. Um, I have some old ones over here, like you can take a look at this one. You know, it's all twisted up and, you know, tangled up. But you see how all the pieces came out of the end there, you know? Well, if you put the heat shriek around it and then that'll help hold it together a little bit better. And um, so you take that, you know, you add your, uh, you got your little uh, triangle going in the back and then you can get like a shuffle beat. One of the things that the Cajun folks that I at least picked up from them was um, that little drag back up, you know. You got your shuffle beat, but they'll, they'll give it a little upbeat every now and again. And you can, you can, you know, find all kinds of variations of that. That's then you just, you know, you keep a couple of, you do a little recycling and you take your, uh, you know, it's, a, it's like a little uh, tuna fish can and uh, the chicken of the sea, you know, and those kinds of things. And they're just, uh, you know, bolted right on the side. And that was in case I ever lost it. People could call me up and say, hey, you lost your washboard. And uh, that's just a two by four on the back of it. Okay. And a two by four with a little piece of Luan up on the top. Oh, wow. And, uh, and then spaced out enough so that I seen, uh, I mean, my other major influence for this kind of stuff was David Holt in, uh, in the Carolinas, you know, uh, David Holt lives here in North Carolina now. And, um, I mean, man, that guy plays everything, you know, un unbelievably, but, uh, you know, he said, uh, you don't have to buy a wood block, just cut, you know, carve it out of an old two by or, you know, anything that, Gives you a little wood block and you got your tin can. I always liked uh, this little rub board that I got over here. Has um, sort of the same thing going on. Only this is just a smaller version, so it's a little easier to carry around. And instead of this, this little goat bell, <laughs> I thought, you know, that... That big one that was hanging, this was literally hanging on the, on the door at a, uh, an antique store. And uh, the guy said, oh yeah, that's for sale, you know, because I was looking, I was looking for uh, cowbells or just bells in period, you know. And uh, you got to be a little odd to go through, you know, uh, when we go to a, uh, me and Michelle both now, when we go to a uh, antique store, you know, I carry at least one whisk. So I can listen to the sound. <laughs> you just carry one whisk with you just to test them out? Yeah, yeah. You just oh, keep wow. one in your pocket, you know, and the people <laughs> go, wonder why that guy, he's strange. Look at he's carrying that one whisk. What's he going to do? He's going to cook <laughs> breakfast or something? He's going to make muffins. He might make muffins at any time now, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this thing has a heck of a ring. But, uh, and of course, depending on, I hit it with this spoon, so it'd be a little louder for you there, but, um, you know, depending on what you're playing it with, the sound, you know, and that's the key to these, because if you're playing, especially with acoustic musicians, and even if you're not, the last thing someone in a music jam or a band or anything needs is for some guy to show up with one of these and then beat the hound out of it. And you know, it turns into noise. Uh, so you don't want that. And these things really let you, um, you know, dial in 
the volume. Okay, I can really lay back on it. And these things, when you're pushing on them, so you can, you can, you can, they flex. You know, it's more like a brush uh, that a drummer or somebody would use, you know. And I'm not a drummer. I don't know beans about, you know, counting anything. I just listen and whatever, the, you know, someone's playing, I, I, I'll start with a simple little tap and just wait and see what it's going, you know. And then see what a difference you get tapping. Now that wood block's got a nice sound too. Another little two by four, a really small one on this one, you know. And uh, if you see under there, it's a little hollowed out. Maybe you can see where I had to dig on that one. But uh, that one's got a nice sound. Now why that little piece of wood had a better sound than the other piece of wood, I don't know. But that's the way it works. I bet you when I have sat around the house here to uh, to carve out one of these on the inside or, you know, play around with it, you'll do one and you'll do it exactly like you did the other one and it just don't have the sound, you know? And um, it's like uh, there was a uh, an old jug band guy, uh, Gus Cannon, that said, had a quote where he was talking about playing the jug or anything like this. And he would say, uh, well, you know, you have to, like I said, carry, you have to carry your whisk to the antique store and go around tapping on them all because some of them have music in them and some of them don't. And uh, you got to find the one with the music in it, you know. But you'll notice that the sound of this sounds a little different than the bigger one because of the size, but it's also because of the back. Notice the back is solid wood. That dampens it down a little bit. And that kind of stuff is really important. You want it to dampen it down a little bit, I have found, because if it's too live, it's too loud through the rest of the group. So, you know, if you're trying to play the washboard with a band, the the best thing to do is to remember that you're, you're it's like David Holt said, it's not just a, a novel thing, it's, a, it's an instrument think of it that way and complement what's going on around you. You know, if it's a laid back song, you got to lay back on this. You can't be hitting it hard. And these allow you to do that. A lot of people, you know, uh, traditionally think of, and I see people all the time playing with them, nothing wrong with it. Uh, thimbles, you know, you use a little thimble. And uh, some people, depending on how old you are, don't have an idea what a thimble is, it, what it's for, but sewing, you know, folks would uh, push their needles with it. But as you can see here with my, here's my problem with a thimble. You can see how that doesn't begin to go down on my fingers, you know? So they would fly off and hit people in the front rows and that didn't work out good. But you know, you're tapping on it. Most of it will be a tapping thing. And it's hard, uh, hard for me to hold those and try to play with them, but these can get really loud. Now I'm going to give you another little interesting tip that, uh, you know, as far as I know, I guess this, this may be one of my, my little ditties right here. Uh, I just, you know, uh, necessity and invention, um, you know, uh, this wouldn't fit on my finger. So I was like, man, how can I do this? You know, what could I come up with? And um, I, I loved, I mean, I tinker and work on all kinds of stuff all the time. So I had a bunch of old things laying around and I ended up doing this. Can you tell what I've got there going? This is a, it's the thimble. <laughs> I know what, it. what is that on the end? That looks like a hose it's or something fake. like that. That's what everybody at home is doing. Oh, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh man, that's another. I'm back into Saturday night live mode. You know what that is? <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a piece of elastic. Okay. Oh. It's a strip like of elastic, you know, just like right out of your underwear or something, you know, 
So you could even cut your underwear up and do this, but uh, you know, hard times like it is right now with us all this musicians being out of work. If I got to make some more of these, it's gonna be that way, you know. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, what I done is I took a little contact cement, you know, and put it around the edges of the thimble, put a little bit there, rolled it up, and then just you know rolled it right to the edge, and then you're you're good to go. And then that'll slide down on your finger, all right. And then you do the next one, okay, get it a little different sizing or whatever. But now that'll fit on your fingers and they won't fly off, you know? And you can do that for as many you know, all the way around if you want them. But, you know, I have learned that you really don't need all this on one hand. To me, uh, two is a plenty, you know? One isn't quite enough, you know, and you want it to, uh, I always give them a little tap there, but you want it to have a, the two give you a nice roll. And it's a, still a lot of a tapping. You gotta mainly tap with this, okay? And not, not too loud because this gets really loud quick. I mean, I can, I'm hammering it pretty hard there, you know? You don't want to do that when you're playing with a group because you'll be overpowering everybody, you know, and they can't hear it. It is a nice way, and it, you know, gives. Well, I wish I had a mole in the ground. Lord, I wish I had a mole in the ground. A mole in the ground, Lord, to root that mountain down. But I mean, you know, that's that's a thimble thing. Thank you. I, I don't do <laughs> I don't play the thimbles as much anymore. Uh, every now and then, it is good for a lot of the, you know, just a, a little more showboaty kind of things. But for really playing with a group of people, if you go back with these, you get the tap. Depending on how hard I want to tap that, you know. I can really get a good laid back. I love the sound of these whisks for that draw. As opposed to, you know, these, which gave me that really loud. So it's a whole different ball game. But yeah. It just it just seems like washboard really does allow for a lot of creativity with either making your yes it really it, it really does because you know i just threw this one on here uh and it worked out the sizing and all worked out good but uh i am really interested to see how this one's going to sound before it's over with because this little this little bell is going to have a nice sound you have to get that this the little ball on the inside out of there otherwise it, it's making too much noise but you know this could be something that could be stuck on there in a different spot and you get a different pitch you know maybe two or three of them or something but um yeah you know that's the thing that to me uh, what happened was is i kind of started like i said with going to louisiana because we like cajun and zydeco music and then that led me to the mill and the old time guides and all of these old boards. This is one that Michelle plays too a lot and she's got a lot of miles on this one. But uh, this is another little uh, national with the solid wood back. And uh, it's a uh, number 703 this one is. And it's called, I love this one. This is my favorite. This is, uh, David Holt says this washboard is the Stradivarius of washboards. But this is the, uh, you notice up here it says Zinc King. And I love Zinc. this, the lingerie model. Can you see that? That's fancy. It's <laughs> a good that name. Great? Isn't that great? Uh, oh, the lingerie awesome. model for washing the delicates, ladies. <laughs> and you'll notice on uh, this one now, it's a Zinc King, same one. And it still has the Zinc rub board in it. And what you have to be careful about when you're playing the washboard is, especially if you're playing with thimbles, 
or spoons or, you know, uh, the Zydeco guys like these a lot. I was going to talk to you about the uh, Chenier brothers there and uh, T. Don. They use these bottle openers, you know, and they, they have a nice sound. I mean, they'll rub across the board. Then you still got your hands, you know, like you're kind of with your fingers. But that sounds quite a bit different than those thimbles did. And these are, you know, you lay them in your hands like that and you just roll them over and play it. And, um, you know, that's just a different way of doing that. But um, this board, because when you play one all the time, you see if you can see, can you see some of those holes that are starting to, yeah, you know, the you're, you're 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 destroying the rub board itself mm -hmm. over time, and even with the whisk, this one has only been played with the whisk, and even those whisks are denning that you know that piece of metal down, and so Michelle at the time, she loved this small board, but man, she was running through those uh, rub boards and the whisk like just like this one, you know. Um, you see how beat up that is. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, you know, and it's got a twist in the neck, you know, and uh, they will they will actually file down. This, this piece of metal can file down itself so much on this that it'll be sharp like a little razor or something, you know. So you have to get rid of it. And uh, she, she kept putting a hole in, in one of these things. So I, I took one of these if you look at the board on this one you can see that it's stainless steel see how it's the same thing so one of the first rub boards that i bought um it was actually the first rub board that i bought and i bought it online and uh i don't remember uh where but uh it was a it was a fine rub board but it was big i didn't know anything about it and the really big rub board seemed like a good thing, you know, at the time. And Ian, you had asked me earlier about the price of one. I haven't bought one in so long, I don't know now. But usually anywhere from $150 to $350. And this one was a large board, and it was, a, you know, a little more expensive. But it seemed like the right thing to get. Well, it was so big that it was not comfortable for Michelle to wear. And so that's when we made the trip to Louisiana. You know, I bought that other rub board before we ever went. And that's why I said, we got to go to Louisiana and talk to people and find out what they do. And if you look at this rub board, I'll stick it on me here for a minute. But you can see that this one's cut out. The other washboard, that first one I bought was probably, you know, this wide, all the way up. So it was all the way out and it was longer. And this one is cut out. Really, they, Larry Miller made this one. And the reason they cut it out is so you don't hit your arms on the metal because that's really easy to do especially you know when you're you're, you're kind of doing your thing and you're into the music and again i'll play this one a little bit with these uh bottle openers so you'll hear it but i mean that's just say one sound but again i still like and michelle like using these whips little higher, little higher pitch. But traditional Cajun folks would have played it with the, something like the bottle openers or really two spoons, you know? And most of the folks that I've ever seen playing live don't play it turned around like this. They hold it in their hands backward like this. And then that way you can, Now that sounds pretty harsh by myself with a piece of metal. But when you put that in a band, especially a full electric band that has a, a bass with a big bottom end and a drummer and an electric guitar player and a Cajun player uh, who is playing accordion that is amplified. Now, before we went on the air, Ian and I were talking about a, an accordion that he has that has the old style of microphone on it. And what did you say that one was made out of, Ian? I believe it was made from an old uh, payphone or the receiving end of a, an old payphone. Yeah. 
be hard to find a payphone nowadays, huh? Right. <laughs> Just uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, but, um, you know, they're all amplified. So this, they can, they can really play hard and they want to play hard. And again, I think, uh, like the bottle openers sound really good on something like this. You're able to slide it easier. So it's like a, a guy with a brush on his snares, you know? And so you can end up with all kinds of sound. You'll tap it. So there's all kinds of variations and it just depends on the music. For me personally, uh, because I said, I'm not a, number one, I'm not, um, trained musically period you know i don't um I, I don't read any music i uh i mean i can read enough to get in trouble you know and um i you know do a little bit of the number system you know for the musicians that are out there like the nashville number system and things like that and uh you know know enough to you know play with someone and do the thing but you know i just uh have learned through that folk process of going around and listening, sharing, talking to people and doing that kind of thing. And um, I don't know, um, those, the beats that those guys do, you could just, you know, you just have to wait till you hear the music and something will hit you. And a lot of times it's a little mistake that you'll find along the way. But I cut that old board and put it in the Michelle's board on this one and she's never rubbed another hole in this one. So doing pretty good on that, on that side. That's great. I wanted to make a, a quick statement here. We, we had a couple of folks that were asking, oh, it sounds like the, the volume has gone down a little bit. I believe it isn't muted. It is just highly reduced in volume, I believe, just because of the sound of the washboard. So my apologies for any kind of sound difficulties there. Yeah. But yeah. Just my apologies. Shows you how loud it can be. <laughs> yeah. I was telling Ian today, I had tried to, um, this is, I, I, I'd like to just say this right quick. Ian and I were talking about it earlier that uh, this is actually the first live anything that we tried to do, um, mainly because where we live and we're not like out in the country secluded, but we're in an area that we don't have uh, a high speed cable internet connection. And so we are basically dependent on a, you know, like a MiFi through Verizon. And that just depends on the tower and how it is. And so we've been really limited. We've wanted to do more live things. And I know uh, that our uh, folks that follow us and have come to shows, uh, that they wanted to see us doing something. And we've wanted to do it. It's just been kind of hard to get it all worked out. And one of the nice things, I'm really super happy to be part of what uh, Ian had asked us to do for this, for that reason. Um, we're going to next Friday, have a, uh, a live performance that we're going to stream. It'll be part of this same uh, series, uh, the quarantines. And uh, Ian and I were talking earlier, we're going to go up to um, Easley, South Carolina, and we're going to do something up there at one of the libraries. And the girls up there have been so generous to basically offer to Ian and talking about some other things. They said, well, hey, you know, if you guys need some help, you know, with this live stream uh, for this artist, have them come to the library we're gonna you know we've got good internet we have some cameras we have things so be sure to do us a favor and uh, spread the word that next friday it'll be myself of course and uh, michelle my wife and we're gonna have steve mcgaha who is a fantastic friend and a fantastic musician he's a folk heritage award winner great finger picker and uh, we're going to let him uh, join us. And that way, Steve will finger pick some things. I can play some of these uh, washboards and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, just the other various things that we have. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So join us next, next Friday for that. And uh, so we're hoping to kind of get all the bugs worked out. And um, I, have a, I have a really nice, you know, wireless mic. And I couldn't get any of it to uh, connect for us this way. So... We're learning the first go around and hopefully um, we'll, we'll get a little better at this. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, there was something that we talked about earlier and we've been kind of lucky throughout this conversation about internet being reliable. And that's certainly an issue that 
is faced by a lot of people in rural South Carolina. And yep. we, were, we were lucky here because just beforehand, we might have had a couple of, of internet issues, but now that's since been resolved. But this kind of goes to something that, you know, I know that you wanted to, to mention a little bit about. Greg. I did. You know, I just, um, you know, I'm like a lot of people, um, whether you're trying to uh, teach your kids on line now like everybody's having to do if your business is having to operate you know more over the internet uh, i mean just like us a little back note about michelle and i, I mean we travel on the road playing uh music you know six months at, out of the year uh, at least and um you know all of those programs we played predominantly, you know, larger music festivals, county fairs, state fairs, those sort of things. Everything went out the window. So we have been from the from the beginning, you know, back in April, trying to figure out, well, how can we do something? Well, the only way to do it is to drive off, you know, to a location and try to do it. And we're gonna experiment more with that. Um, this, uh, rig that I'm using tonight is a little iPad uh, that I bought. It's a newer one that has some more features and hopefully we'll uh, be able to connect with the microphones and those sort of things. But the key is getting uh, a good internet source. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that's crippling a lot of people in a lot of places. And I know that even within our state legislature, there's a lot of the uh, politicians who are discussing that, you know, even the governor here in South Carolina has been on addressing how, you know, in particular children trying to go to school and classes, you know, that, that really just raised the flag to say, hey, you know, we can't get that, you know, we're, we're at a disadvantage here. And um, it's not just the school kids, it's people like us, businesses that have had to change their, maybe they were you know, in, in, in another type of business, not a musician at all, you know, carpenters, plumbers, tile, you know, whatever they were doing, that they got to find a way to, to do whatever they're doing. And, uh, you know, service businesses of all kinds, even even uh, restaurants who are trying to do that sort of thing. But we need a better, you know, uh, thing. So uh, write your legislator, send them an email and let them know that uh, everybody needs to work on that internet connection. Definitely. And from there, before we go out, I just wanted to read a couple comments from, from folks here in the chat. Georgia Greg, Wait. we're going all the way back to Larissa Heimlich. I really apologize for, <laughs> for not having this comment said earlier, saying that we love seeing him at the Hey Good Mill. We've had comments from Carol Goki saying, I'm enjoying your show very much. Thank you for having Greg on. Yeah. And some other folks, uh, Edward Eden, one of the upstate New York folks, saying that we love him up here in upstate New York at the fairs they are in. Yeah. And having a good amount of people coming in and join. And thank you so much for everyone that was able to attend tonight and, and sit in on. If, yeah, we appreciate it. Appreciate all you guys. Thanks a lot. for And be sure to tune in next week because uh, we're going to be really playing the music on that. We're doing a whole a whole music set. And usually I am what, about 45 minutes an hour or something like that? Yeah, 45 minutes an hour. Should be yeah. good. Good oh, deal. We actually, we had a question from Mary Louise Robinson asking, what is the name of all metal washboard? I think the one that's being used for Zydeco. Well, you know, there's, that's a, that's a good question. There is a, uh, there is a French name uh, that some of the guys down there will say it and I can never say that. Uh, like you heard me trying to say Mark Savoy's name. Um, it, but there is there is a French name for that. But the, the thing that I would tell you to take away from it, these style are washboards because that's what they are. They were made to wash clothes on. And even this one, you can see a lot of the, the soap, you know, is the old soap stuff is still there. And uh, I love this one here was talking about these, these little gra drain line, you know, for your soap to set up there and uh, it would drain down the washboard. But these were really called rub boards. And if you're in Louisiana, people call them rub boards and rub board players. They're kind of particular about that. And they're right, you know, this is not for washing clothes. It's too, you know, it would not, it wouldn't work. It's, you know, it's flexible. It looks like a sled if you live up north, you know, you could ride your little sled in the winter. But uh, 
you know, it's not, it's not made for that at all. Uh, but yeah, the, the rub boards, I would just, you know, say uh, that the Cajun and the Zydeco folks are playing rub boards and uh, all us uh, old hillbilly types are playing washboards. Well, great. And if anyone had any other questions here, feel free to ask. But I just wanted to say as we start to close out, you know, thank you again to everyone that joined us this evening. I would simply like to thank you for sharing your music and your knowledge with us tonight. Thank you so much for that. And again, as Greg, next Friday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live to see Greg perform with others as part of our Quarantine's music series. Uh, this will be conducted, as said before, with assistance from the Pickens County's library system. Yep. And thank you again to the South Carolina Arts Commission for your support of Meet the Artists and Quarantunes. And everyone, just thank you so much for tuning on in. We look forward to seeing y'all next Friday. Thanks, everybody. Thank y'all. You have a great night. <laughs>